I didn't know. I'm like, it's funny, I heard your heard yeah. your moment. Uh, Raleigh has oh, that's a very nice right. right. I was coming over here to turn my sounds off. The old downtown, the old downtown, actually what used to be the old slave market, Raleigh. Uh -huh. And it's a very, 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 very nice situation. And they go down there, and there was a guy down there giving carriage rides. Beautiful white horse, beautiful white carriage. And my youngest used to ride a lot, so she wanted to go see the place. And the guy was very nice, but he was just this good old boy from out on the coast, and just a good old sub boy. And we're talking, and I got to the point, and I said, I said, well, yeah, I said, well, something I'm sorry, I'm on call, but give me one moment, it's fine. Hello, it's She already warned me she was going to be the problem child. I was in Raleigh last week. <laughs> really? Doing what? Uh, I was on my way, just flew in and out from there, but I was going to the High Point Market. Okay. Not you, so you, we can thank you for the warm I drive back, yes. It was kind of bombing. Uh, that uh, project at Math Maritime Buzzer's down there. I was down there last week. Uh, yeah. No so way I, I thought I was waiting for them to determine the, uh, I don't know if they have a huge way down. And I was waiting for them to feather the plate and just sit the slot down because it was just, it was, Brutal. they have a wind shadow, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's currently still out there. I, I, I got out of my car and it hurt. Yeah. It was just, oh, yeah. it wasn't yeah. that, yeah. but it was cold. We didn't know. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 so I was going down to the house. Oh, you are. You will. Thank you. I'll learn so, uh, to do uh, to Okay, fine. Yeah, it's kind of addictive once you run it. It is, it's so different for some folks. Hi, come on in. It's nice to have you visit. I've been after a couple of days, we'll you know, come back. I travel a lot, so. Why don't we uh, go ahead and get started, uh, since uh, about a little after 6.30. Uh, my name is Matt Bowes. I'm the reference librarian and assistant director here at the library. So I want to thank you all for uh, coming out this evening. Um, before I talk about tonight's speakers, I do want to mention a couple things about the library that uh, you might be interested in as small business owners. Um, we have great meeting room space here, so if you ever need a space to have a meeting, um, both a large meeting or small meetings, um, think of your library, hopefully, and, and you can call us up and you can reserve a room. Okay, so something that a lot of people don't realize we uh, offer. Uh, we also offer online research resources. Which you can use with your library card from home through our website, or we're always happy to help you with that. You know, if you want to access uh, popular business journals and magazines and uh, other things, uh, we're happy to help with that. Okay. So we actually have a couple of events coming up soon too. I don't know if people come to our annual book sale, but that's in a couple of weeks on November 16th. Uh, pretty big event. Lots of books uh, you can buy at bargain prices. And we also have a celebration this Saturday for the library receiving the um, New Hampshire Library of the Year Award. So, yeah, uh, really, yeah really excited. And uh, so it'll be a fun day of uh, kind of reminiscing about what we did this year and why we were selected. So, uh, but with that, uh, we're very fortunate to have with us this evening uh, Greta Johansson from the Small Business Association and John Hines, who is an insurance broker, a local insurance broker. Um, hopefully, they're going to give you some valuable information to help you uh, learn about the ACA and um, how it affects you. So, uh, thank you both for sharing your time sure, and your expertise you. here at the library, and I'll turn it over to you. So, we, um, hi, my name is Greta Johansson. I'm with the Small Business Administration. We are recording this presentation, so we're going to run through as much of the information as we can uh, to and get to the questions, hopefully answer any questions that we're able to answer at the end of the presentation, so that we can get the, the whole presentation out there for folks to view, anybody who wasn't able to join us tonight. So um, again, I'm with the Small Business Administration, and under the Affordable Care Act, uh, none of the regulations are actually SBA regulations. However, one of our missions is small business education. And one of the biggest things to know about um, I mean, in terms of our mission, one of the biggest things that we're focused on is there are different impacts to a business person under the Affordable Care Act according to how many employees you have. And to help businesses make informed decisions, we're doing the best that we can to get out there and provide you with as much information and guidance and pointing you to some of the resources that are available to you to help you then turn around and make the decision that's best for you and your company and your employees. So that is our mission here today. 
I talk about, I will talk a little bit about marketplace and shop, because I just want to make sure that we all know what marketplace and shop are. Marketplace is an online portal where insurance policies are available for individuals and small businesses to view, where individuals can go through an enrollment process to find out if they're eligible for any forms of assistance toward the cost of an individual policy, and it's got a variety of other pieces of information added. So it's a portal at which people have the option of looking for insurance, and it's the you know, insurance by the same providers that have always been providing insurance. The state of New Hampshire opted to use the federal marketplace, so that website is located at healthcare.gov. So we'll try to make it as easy as possible as we can for you to find it. It's at healthcare.gov. 37 states did that, but each state has its own um, specific information at that website because when it comes right down to it, insurance is provided by private insurance carriers and it is regulated at a state level. So what New Hampshire finds at the website for healthcare.gov is not what somebody in Maine is going to find, is not what somebody in, someone in another state using the federal marketplace is going to find. So um, if anybody here deals with cross-border stuff, I don't know if anybody here deals with Massachusetts or Vermont, uh, they, they have state-based platforms. So they've got different, their own personal state websites where they're managing uh, the, the, affordable, the rollout of the Affordable Care Act on the individual and small business level. So when I talk about marketplace, that's what I'm talking about, the online portal at healthcare.gov. When I talk about shop, I'm talking about the small business health options program, which is the small business section of the marketplace. And again, you go to healthcare.gov, you choose I'm an individual or you choose I'm a small business, and you get pointed to the information that applies to whatever it is you're looking for. So let's get into this. I mentioned that the impact of the Affordable Care Act varies according to how many employees a small business have, has. If you are self-employed with no employees, anybody here self-employed with no employees? There you go. In terms of the marketplace, and this, my understanding is this is a change for New Hampshire. It's not necessarily a change in other states. In the marketplace, you're handled as an individual, not you, the option for being in the small employer, small group market goes away in the marketplace. Um, that's not to say that any policy you currently have is going to expire all of a sudden. Whatever your renewal time frame is, that renewal time frame is still in effect. So if your policy is on a calendar year, then yeah, you need to start looking for what your health insurance options are. If your policy doesn't renew until June, then sometime between now and June, you've got to look at what your renewal options are. But you're in the individual marketplace. So um, for individuals, the healthcare.gov, we've heard a lot about it. Um, we've heard a lot about challenges with people enrolling. But it is actually getting better every day, and I can tell that just from having to query the site to find information. There's more information that's available on there on a regular basis, and there's, um, there are more and more resources every day that can help you with the process. We had a little bit of delay in the state of New Hampshire in terms of getting the whole consumer assistance network going. But that has been worked out, and the New Hampshire Health Plan has received the federal funding that was made available to all states to do their customer service uh, component of this. So there is more and more and more information about local programs coming out on a regular basis. And I, I don't have a list of all of them because it's still, still being developed, but I do want to mention uh, one particular website that you might want to keep in mind, and it's nhvoicesforhealth.org. There.org, yes? Uh, New Hampshire Voices for Health. Uh, if it's not nhvoicesforhealth.org, then if you Google New Hampshire Voices for Health, you will find it. And if you go to their events calendar, is it going to have every event that's going on? No, because that, that, that's a monster task, and we haven't handled that task yet. But what it will have, that under their calendar of events right now, you will see something going on almost every day in one town or another. And it also has some enrollment fairs that are posted. And some of the enrollment fairs are on Saturday. Some of the programs in different towns are in evenings. And what a lot of that information is, is there are navigators and other volunteers who are working to make this information available to you. And if it just says, learn about the Affordable Care Act Bedford, learn about the Affordable Care Act Gorham, learn about the Affordable Care Act Claremont, those are probably volunteers from AARP. 
who have gone through training to make sure that they know what they need to know to talk to individuals who are trying to deal with this and make decisions and enroll in this process. So those resources, feel free to go to that website and look at their calendar because you never know when there might be something in your neighborhood. Yeah, yes. my question is, is, is that what you recommend that instead of people seeing an agent or broker, they go to nope. the navigator? No, but that's an excellent question because no, absolutely not. And, and I'm not actually going to recommend one over the other. What I would encourage people to do is whatever works for you. You can work with your agent. You can work with your broker. You can go to one of the enrollment fairs. You can do some combination thereof. You can jump online and do it yourself entirely according to what works for you, where you feel you're getting the information you need to make the right decision, and, and how comfortable you are with the different forms. All right, just for the sake of disclosure, I'm a broker, I've been in business since 1985 in this Absolutely. Town, and no one is an expert, but if you have a navigator who takes their course, they're taught that after they've done it for two weeks, they can call themselves experts. Their training guide is right online. They are not experts, no one is. And I caution anybody to deal with somebody who has not had a background check, who is not licensed, who has no experience, and um, is not even held accountable. They don't even have errors in emissions insurance, and there's no oversight. Okay. I, I hear the point. I do, um, but but we're we're a little bit outside of outside of what yeah. I can really address, and yeah, so and I, I really want to get to what I can address. Is, but is no, the I, fairs that you mentioned. If, if they're being run by political action Nav groups or navigators or sisters. Navigators are subject to state pressure. regulation, and that yes. is all being worked out. It's but the navigators, navigation, but at the same however, time. However, not licensing. Regulations is federal. Understood. Understood. Um, but that is also why we encourage people to get their information, know what your resources are, and to know what all the variety of options that you have available to you. And it does not exclude agents and brokers. They are completely in the mix. As a matter of fact, they're a very important part of the mix because that is a, a vehicle that people already use. And so the fact that the brokers are available to help their customers or get new customers, I think is a good thing. <coughs> I think that there will be demand, increased demand for brokers to help guide people through this process. But in any event, whichever way um, someone tries to go through the marketplace, here's what we're looking at for, um, for individuals, uh, effective 2014. The goal is for everybody to have affordable insurance. That's the goal. Um, it's, it's a goal at this time. It's a lofty goal, but, it, but it's what we're going to work toward. So if you already have insurance, uh, you just need to take a look at, is my policy going to change because the rules are going to change, and when might those changes be in effect? If you know that your policy is expiring soon and you want to look at what's on the marketplace, you can look at the marketplace and see what that is now. You can also, when you go to the marketplace, you can see, find out whether or not you qualify for any form of assistance to help you with the cost of insurance. For anyone who's been insured all along and has dealt with this, it's not that not that big a change, um, you know, in terms of you know buying insurance. I'm not saying the insurance isn't changing, but the process of making a reasonable decision about what insurance package do I want is something that you're already accustomed to. This is a bigger change for people who've never been in the insurance world because they haven't been able to be. They've got a, they, it's all it's all new to them, so they're gonna have to work a little harder at it. But I do want to touch on what some of the assistance is. Depending on someone's income level, there might be assistance for people to help with the cost of premiums. And this is for anyone whose household income is in the range of 100 to 400% of the federal poverty level. This just gives you an example of what that range is for a family size of four. If you do go to visit the website, you don't have to set up a personal account to see that because I've actually been to the website and I've been able to see it. It will give you the whole range. You know, you answer a few questions. I'm in New Hampshire, I'm in this county, I'm looking for my family, or I'm looking for my family, my children, whatever it is you're looking for. You will get to a page where there's a list that shows you what that income range is for a family size from I think one to 10. And you can look right at that and say, yeah, our household income's in that range for that family size. I might have a form of assistance here. It's further motivation to go further and see what is available and what kinds of plans are being offered. There are a tremendous number of plans being offered, despite the fact that Anthem's the only one currently in the marketplace. Harvard Pilgrim has, has promised that they're going to do everything they can to maybe be in there by 2015. But right now, we only have Anthem in the marketplace. But that doesn't mean there's only one choice, because there are different kinds of plans that are in the marketplace. 
Uh, and you have metal tiers, tiered levels. This applies to both individuals and small businesses. There's bronze, gold, silver, oh, I'm sorry, wrong order. Uh, bronze, silver, gold, platinum. And the metal tiers simply mean bronze, lower premiums, probably higher co A's, higher deductibles, lower premiums. So more appealing towards folks who feel that their use of health care and, and the need for services is probably going to happen a little bit less often or the earnings level is a little bit lower. So they've got the lower premiums and they can afford whatever those deductibles or co-pays might be. Platinum, there's no platinum things on there right now, so you don't have to worry about it. But that would be the, the higher end of coverage. Much higher premium, much lower out-of-pocket costs whenever you do have to use a service of some sort. Uh, silver and gold are so far looking to be the most popular, and they're, they're somewhere in the middle. And what the, to give a rough estimate, and this deals with actuarial values and things that are a little, little beyond my, my realm. But basically, for a bronze level plan, it is estimated that whatever your health insurance costs are for the year, the plan will cover roughly 60% of it. Your out of pocket costs would be roughly 40% of whatever your health services needs are that year. That percentage shifts as you go higher on the scale. Uh, the gold level would be 70 30, 70% 70 covered by insurance, 30% covered by the insured. 80 20. Is the, is the gold level, I'm sorry, silver, then the gold level, and then the platinum is 90-10. But again, um, Anthem at the present time is not offering anything at the platinum level for individuals. They are offering at the other three tiers, bronze, silver, gold. <coughs> You'll also find that the information is available for what's it cost for you alone to be insured, and it's gonna ask your age, so that makes a difference on, on what the premium might be. Uh, are you looking for insurance for yourself? Are you looking for insurance for yourself and your children? Are you looking for insurance for yourself and your spouse? Or are you looking for insurance for all of that? Yourself, your spouse, and your children? Because the premiums are going to vary according to what it is that you're looking for. So that's what you can find online. And if individuals who, no one's gonna make you buy the insurance, but there is what's called a shared responsibility payment. So if you opt out this year, say I'm just I'm uninsured right now and I think I'm healthy and I'm just not prepared to deal with this just yet, that's an option. You've got that option available to you. But when you file your 2014 tax returns and can't demonstrate that you had insurance for the year, you might get hit with a shared responsibility payment. The first year that shared responsibility payment is $95 or 1% of your income, whichever is higher. That's not that big a stick the first year, but it, but it, but it goes up. Each year it goes up a little bit more. Uninsured children, if you have children and you don't provide insurance for them, the shared responsibility payment is half, half the fee that it is for an adult. There are waiver options. Um, there, are, there are conditions under which those shared responsibility payments might be waived and it has to do with if your income is too low to file tax returns. If your income, if you're in that range where if New Hampshire opted to expand Medicaid, you would have been covered by that expansion. Uh, but if the state opts not to expand Medicaid, you would be in that pool of people where there may not be help for you to afford the insurance, but you would not be subject to that shared responsibility payment. There's a list of, of waivers for conditions under which one does not have to uh, make the payment if they are uninsured. It includes if your gap insurance coverage is less than three months, if you are a member of a recognized religious organization that does not believe in medical insurance, there are, there are a few folks who don't, that's just seeing doctors, that's not what they do. It, it's outside of their religious beliefs. So there are a variety of exemptions. Uh, but if you are otherwise, you know, making, earning a reasonable living and opt out of insurance, you may get hit with $95 or 1% of your income, whichever is greater, when you file your 2014 tax returns, which means that's sometime in 2015 when that payment would come due. It would either be deducted from any refund you were owed or you would be billed in connection with your tax returns. So that is the self-employed piece of it. Again, you, you, can, you have the option of buying insurance inside or outside of the marketplace or not buying it at all. The options outside of the marketplace, um, if you're with Anthem, they're gonna be pushing everybody into the marketplace so that that's how they will handle their individual folks. If you're with Anthem now, however, you have an early renewal option, so long as you act on it by the 15th of this month. Uh, so act on that quick if you, if you want to um, exercise that option. Uh, but, you know, people who are insured with other providers, you still have that option. 
So I know that Harvard Pilgrim is not the marketplace yet. It doesn't mean they've stopped offering insurance. They're still out there. They're still offering insurance. And if that's who you want to work with, keep working with them. Uh, so visit the website. Visit your agent. Visit your broker. Get another workshop. Check somebody's online calendar. And, and stay tuned for new developments, because the state's consumer outreach efforts are just now rolling. And they're, they're really starting to kick in. And, and it's been surprising how many more of these kinds of venues have been <coughs> cropping up over the last few weeks. So the next group of the next um, set of businesses, all of those with employees other than yourself, um, if you have additional employees, the impacts again will vary according to how many employees that you have. And if you thought you knew what full time meant, yeah, think again. Under the Affordable Care Act, full time is, is maybe different than we've um, been accustomed to hearing in the past. You need to know how many employees you have as a full-time slash full-time equivalent number. And this is a way of aggregating all of your full-time employees and all of your part-time employees and doing an estimation on the part-time employees that equates them to some other number of full-time employees, some smaller number of full-time employees, to determine how many, as an employer, how many employees do you have. Full-time starts at 30 hours a week. Anybody that you have on board who works 30 or more hours a week under the Affordable Care Act is considered full-time employee. Under 30 hours a week is part-time. Uh, a real rough estimate, it's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty close, would say two, two employees who work on average 15 hours a week would be roughly equivalent to one full-time employee. It's not exact because in some places we're using 130 hours a month, and in other places they're using 120 hours a month, and that's just to, to make sure that it's not easy math. But it's close. So what I would encourage you to know is if you uh, look at your employees, your full-times and your part-times, based on 30 hours is full-time, and everybody else, you sort of add them all together and, together and divide by 30 on the average week and say, you know, whatever that comes to, that's your full-time equivalence. If you add those together and it's looking like you're close to 50 or maybe at 50 or maybe over, then you need to do the math because the impact changes if you're under 50 or at 50 and over. So on the cusp, the math is really important. If you're clearly under or clearly over, you don't need to worry so much about, about that 120 hours, 130 hours, or how exactly does the math work out. There are a lot of people who will help you out. There are a lot of actually online resources that can help you estimate your, your employee count. And there's a, a worksheet on the IRS website. There's, there's a variety of different things that can help you. But you can also give me a call anytime you want, and we'll kind of walk through the math if you need the help. But um, once you figure that out, the next important category to know is businesses that have 25, a fewer than 25 employees. Anybody in here in that category? Okay. There are three conditions that need to be met for this potential for a small business, business health care tax credit to kick in. And that is fewer than 25 full-time or full-time equivalent employees. Average wages below 50,000, not all of them, but on average. And have you or are you willing to, if you can afford it, pay at least 50% of the employee's self only premium? I mentioned before that when you're looking at the premiums, you're going to see self only, self with children, self with spouse, self with children and spouse. And you need to know all of that as the employer because determining whether or not you're eligible for a small business tax credit is based in part on how much of the self-only premium are you able to contribute to help the employees acquire affordable health insurance. So if you meet those three conditions, this tax credit has been in effect since 2010. It's estimated that there's something like 3.2 million businesses uh, that have fewer than 25,000 employees, but in 2011 there were 360,000 businesses that benefited from this tax credit. It is a direct tax credit up to 35% for a for-profit business, up to 25% for a not-for-profit business to help you offset the cost of providing that um, employer-sponsored insurance. It's a sliding scale, and it's been in effect since 2010, so you can pretty much find all of this at irs.gov. They're the definitive authority on anything that relates to tax credits, and they actually have a very friendly website. I had mentioned earlier, who knew that I'd fall in love with the IRS website? but it actually is very easy to find information on it. And 
it's a sliding scale. But the lower the wages, the smaller the number of employees, the higher the tax credit. And as you approach 25 and approach 50,000 on the wage level, the smaller the tax credit. So it's a sliding scale in there. I, while I do know that 360,000 businesses in 2011 were able to qualify for a tax credit, we don't have that information on a state-by-state business on a state-by-state -state basis. I do know that there are businesses in New Hampshire who benefited from it because there have been random observations at different programs where someone said, got one of those, you know. So, so there are folks who have been able to benefit from this. And because it's been in effect, this isn't one of those draft regulation things. They're, they're already in effect because they've been in use for three years. They are available for any business that um, has been receiving them if they meet the eligibility criteria or even businesses or not-for-profits that haven't been receiving them but might turn out to be eligible if you acquire your insurance through shop. So the, you've got to be in the marketplace and in shop and look at one of those plans. And if you take a look at, well, yeah, the average wages of my employees are in the low 40,000s and I really only have 12 employees, then there's a chance, a really good chance, that there's a tax credit there that can help you offset that cost. So you take a look at what's in, in shop, what's being offered, take a look at what the individual premiums would be, which will vary according to the different ages of your different employees. And if you had a tax credit to offset some of that, some of that premium, would you be able to cover 50% of it? You still write it off as an expense. You still have all of the things that are a, a legitimate business expenses, cost of doing business. So that doesn't change. Do you also qualify for a tax credit that makes it more affordable for you to be able to offer this to your employees? In 2014, if you acquire your insurance through shop or at any time, whenever your renewal period comes up, so it's somewhere down the road in 2014 or it could even be as late as 2015, um, so long as you go through shop and meet all the other eligibility criteria, this benefit goes up for two years, it increases, and it only lasts for two more years unless someone comes up with funding. It increases for for-profit businesses, it increases to 50%. For not-for-profit businesses, it increases to 35%. Subject to sequestration. Um, that's only not-for-profits who are subject to the sequestration. That, that doesn't apply to for-profit businesses. So uh, a potential for somewhere between you know, zero and 50% tax credit toward the cost of providing the premiums for employees for many small businesses, that could be the make or break on whether or not they can afford it. And it's whether or not they can afford to offer insurance for the first time, or whether or not they can afford to continue offering insurance despite the annual increases that employers have been hit with on the cost of providing that insurance. So you get the tax credit, now it is only for two years, and the hope is that somehow over the course of two years, either rates stabilize or come down, or other adjustments are made so that even if the tax credit goes away, we can still you know, continue on with this benefit. That's the hope at this point. Uh, but that we will not know until we're two years down the road. So we'll have to wait and see how that works out. So the next group of businesses, oh, this is the stuff I was just talking about. I forgot to advance my slide. Uh, so the next group of businesses, <coughs> I've already talked about shop, and again, shop is the small business health options program, part of the federal marketplace. To start out, initially, what businesses can use shop as an option? Not mandatory, but as an option. Those with 50 or fewer full-time, full-time equivalents, that same exercise. 30 hours a week on average, you know, 30 or more hours a week on average with the full-time equivalency count for your part-time employees. If you are at or below 50, the plans that are available through shop are an option for you if you want to offer those to your employees. I do want to mention, because we do have a lot of seasonal businesses throughout the state. If you have, anybody here have a seasonal business? Okay. The, the upside is that uh, a seasonal count is not going to be the count. Any, if you have a bunch of seasonal employees who are on board for 120 days or less, that's not the count that's going to push you under or over that, that 50 limit. You can just take them right out of the calculation. Uh, but excluding your seasonal employees, those who are on board for 120 days or less, if you're at 50 or below, shop's an option for you. There is a tremendous amount of information you can get about what the shop options are, even without setting up an account. You can't, however, download what a shop application looks like unless you download, unless you set up an account. You can as an individual. We have some over here that you can take a look at before you leave if, leave if you like. But the shop application, you have to actually set up an account before you can download a paper copy of it. 
Uh, but in any event, those are the folks who can use SHOP. And, and as I mentioned, SHOP is simply a portal where you can view what insurance plans are being offered. Right now they're from Anthem. Hopefully next year they'll have more options in there. I also want to point out if you're near 50, if you're anywhere near that 50, one of, one of the upsides to SHOP is that once you're in it, you don't outgrow it. If you have a banner year, if you started the year with 45 employees, you had a banner, banner year and you ended it with 65 employees, that's all right, you're already in shop, you can stay there. Now in 2016, that upper limit is going to increase to 100 employees, uh, but that's not until 2016. Something happened with the, the slideshow, so, so that the slides are not 100% available. Something happened in the transition. I think the presentation that I brought was not 100% compatible with the software that's on here, but I think it only affects a couple of slides. So we will do our best to work our way through it. But I just want to mention we have heard a lot in the news about the, the website and the challenges with the healthcare.gov website. And uh, those challenges, I mean, those complaints are legitimate. They're having challenges with it. But it is also true, based on my personal experience with it, that it's getting better all the time. So what you can do now is you can set up an account. You can browse through available plan options. You can download a paper copy of the application. And I have been advised by people who have actually been through this process or have helped people go through this process that this is what they would actually recommend that you do. Set up an account, download the paper copy, gather the information that the application package requires, and then, when you're ready, when you have the time, go back, log onto the account, and call the customer service line. And it'll be a lot more effective than trying to do it differently. We've also been told that by the end of the month, the full online functionality will be there. So that is also an option for you. Um, so those, those are some tips that might help you in filling out uh, the application and finding out what you want to do. You still, again, agents and brokers, nothing replaces their role in this. So agents and brokers will also be able to establish accounts and work with customers to help go through this whole process of acquiring your insurance. It's another way of acquiring your insurance that does not necessarily replace all the other service providers that have helped you do that in years past. Hmm. So again, I think I've actually already covered this. The, the paper application kind of walks you through the test and the shop um, phone number can help complete your application. And what this application actually does is it determines are you an eligible business to be using SHOP to acquire your insurance. And after you've submitted the application, you'll get a separate notification of eligibility. Once you've been told, yep, you're eligible to acquire your insurance through SHOP, now you can log on, reactivate your account, and now you can select which plan do you want, and then you can advise your employees so that they know what, which plans they have an option of buying into. One of the things that will happen uh, hopefully in 2015, just got delayed for a year, right now the employer can choose a plan. This is the plan that I'm able to offer uh, as employer-sponsored insurance for my employees. And the employees can then enroll in either the self-only or the self-and-children or the self-and-whatever in that particular plan. In future years, beginning in 2015 we hope, the employer is going to be able to select, I select this peer, and the employees will be able to go to that peer and pick whatever plan they want off it. That, that's a future goal. And I think when, uh, when we've worked out all the kinks and we have more players in shopping in the marketplace, that'll be a lot more effective because people will have different choices. There you go. Now we got the whole thing right there on the screen. I apologize for the, for the challenge with some of the slides. Um, but that's the, the phone number that you can call, it kind of outlines what we were just going through. The website is open daily. It has language assistance. Um, it has links for if you speak one of these languages, and then you know, follow this link and we'll find someone who can help you in your language. But there is already material in multiple languages. Uh, I think everybody in here is near as I can tell, I've heard everybody's voices, and I think we're all in the English-speaking world, so we don't have a language challenge yet, but if you're working with someone who has a language challenge, language resources are built into the website, so that should not be a hole. Um, this challenge right here, having until December 15th in order to have insurance that will be effective January 1, that is being renegotiated because of the delays in the website becoming functional. If it doesn't have full functionality until the end of November, then that two-week window isn't enough time. 
So that's already being negotiated to allow folks to have a longer period of time to enroll to still have their plan effective January 1. So if you find yourself getting close to December 15th and are starting to worry, we're 99% sure at this point you're not going to have to worry. You're still going to have a little bit more time. Um, but the delay, that's one of the things, stay tuned to the news because as problems are resolved, new deadlines are established according to how long it took to resolve some of the challenges. This I just threw out there just to give you a rough estimate. And again, I apologize, we can't see the whole screen, but this is just what was available on the line a few days ago, uh, what the price would be for employees and their children at the bronze level and the silver level. And my apologies, you can't quite see the gold level, but it would, of course, be higher than the silver level. Those are the premiums that were available at that time. There's a whole spreadsheet that you can download now right from the site. And it has both health insurance and dental insurance. We have several dental insurance providers in the marketplace. And the spreadsheets look like this. And it's by county and, and with the different categories. And this is a sample um, for age 27 versus age 50 for what the premiums would be at the different tier levels by county. So this, you can download without having an account. And you can get a feel for what am I looking at in terms of price ranges and how affordable might they be. So there's a tremendous amount of information that you can see online now. And then we get to the slides that fit right within, right within this window. So that, that kind of does it for employees with uh, 50 or fewer who are able to work in shop. The next subject doesn't really have anything to do with that federal marketplace or shop. And it has to do with larger employees. And uh, until 2016, those, that magic number 50 falls into both categories. You fall into the, I have shop as an option for acquiring my insurance, but you also fall into this, I'm considered large under this act for the purpose of shared responsibility payments. Anybody in here 50 or over on the number of employees? Okay. Big reprieve on this. What this means is for employer-sponsored insurance, I mean, great, people have always had pretty much two choices for how you get your insurance. You're either fortunate enough to have employer-sponsored insurance or you're on your own out there in the individual market. And as an individual, uh, there hasn't been that ability to